Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we're continuing our study in the book of Acts. And this is our 30th session in this book. And we're at chapter 9, verses 23 to 31 tonight. And we're seeing what's happened in Saul's life here as we saw his conversion there at the first part of this chapter. And we're going to see what's going to happen as he moves into this new realm of uh, as a believer and dealing with those that... Uh, he came to kill. He's, he's saved. Now he's preaching to those he came to kill. Uh, they were once his enemies, and now they're his brothers, and his brothers are now his enemies when you look at the Jews and the religious leaders. So we see that change. It's uh, Saul, I come to know Christ as his Savior. So we get to, we're going to start. I'm going to go back up to verse 22 in chapter 9. We'll just back up a little bit. It said, But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded or confused the Jews, which to all that Damascus, proving that. This is very Christ. And we talked about how he, he preached that Christ is who he really said he was. He's the Son of God. And so before we get down to verse 23, we have a, there's a uh, time span in here that uh, was not really obvious. But um, this is a time that Paul, uh, it's Paul when he goes to, uh, to Arabia. And I'm going over to Galatians in um, chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses uh, 15 to 24. And then we'll look at chapter 2, verse 1. And this is what happened in Paul's life here between the time that he's done preaching there. If you remember last week we talked about in verse 19, it said certain days. That was, that's a short period of time. Well, if we look at verse uh, 23, we'll see that he was uh, after many days. And that was an extended period of time. It runs right at uh, three years. So let's go over to Galatians in chapter 1, and starting in verse 15. He said, But it would please God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. In other words, he didn't talk to any of the other disciples or apostles. Neither when I when I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But he said, I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Verse 18, And then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But the other of the apostles saw an unsaved James, the Lord's brother. That's the Lord's half-brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. And in chapter 2, verse 1, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. So we see the kind of a picture of what uh, Saul or Paul was doing at this time. Now he's writing to the churches of Galatia. This is a region. And he's giving the testimony of, of just what happened in his life and what he's doing here. He's showing that, that uh, he wasn't just trained by the apostles, by some other's words. He was actually trained by the Lord Jesus Christ. So he spent some time with Christ in the Arabian desert. Kind of reminds us what Moses did, didn't it, when he left uh, down in Egypt and uh, he went to the desert. So we see Paul, uh, he's getting this information, he's building his ministry, his understanding of Christ. And he still, as he, as we read and study on, we'll see that uh, uh, he, he wants to verify, he wants to be reassured that what he's saying is true. He wants to be very careful in how he shares the gospel. He don't want to preach a false gospel. If we look back over in Galatians earlier in that chapter 1, we would see that he, he really took a firm stand against those that preach any other gospel than the one true gospel, and that's that Christ is the only way. Uh, there is no other way. So all this other teaching and preaching that was going on was false. And so Paul is really reassuring himself and making sure in his mind as we study here that, that he wants to be rightly dividing the word of truth. And for you and I as Christians, we want to be sure that uh, when somebody, if you're listening to a teacher or a preacher and uh, they give us some information, we need to go to that scripture just like we're doing here, going to chapter 9 and, and the book of Acts and seeing what God says and then measuring that against what the teacher or the preacher is saying to be sure that we understand it and we get it right. Um, you know, I, I hear so many times if you listen to the news, they'll say, uh, well, if this is right or if that's right or if this can be verified. But when you start putting information out that's, that you know, uh, that you're not sure that is true, what can happen is people can grab that and then they just hang on to that and they don't hear the rest of it. If something comes to contradict what you said, that don't get brought out so much sometimes because we have these uh, agendas, if you would, that people want to promote. And it's the same true in the Bible. Uh, how people take the Bible and misquote it, take it out of context, 
and uh, we see the, all the different things. So Paul is wanting to be sure that, that he doesn't. So to verify to these Galatians as he's writing to them that uh, he is who he said he is and he's been properly uh, introduced to Christianity, if you would, uh, that shows that he has qualifications. He, sometimes Paul was facing some people that kind of questioned, you know, is, are you really qualified to be an apostle? Are you really qualified to be who you say you are? So we see here that we get back over to chapter 9, verse 23. He says, and after that many days, that period of time we just read over in Galatians, were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. And they, they could not stand it. If you remember back in verse 22, he was preaching and he was trying to confront him and he, was, he had him confused. He was all upset. And they, so what happened? This is, you know, if we want to bring this up to today, it's kind of like this cancel culture we have today. If, if you don't agree, if you don't agree with me, I'll just kill you and get you out of the way. Get rid of anybody that don't agree with us or that we can't uh, understand. And that's what they wanted to do. The, the preaching apparently, apparently in verse 22 was, uh, made him look bad. Because uh, he was a Pharisee, so most of his teaching as far as the law and everything would be in line with them. But what he was introducing now was the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And that surely was the stumbling block. Uh, that's what it is in the, this portion of the scripture here. It's that through the whole New Testament, through the uh, a time from then until now, Christ is the stumbling block. When we see uh, you know, some religions like Muslims, and that, they're, they're more tolerated. Uh, they're they're more accepted into different areas of society. But uh, when you come to when it comes to Christianity, boy, the, the world really takes a stand because Christ is that stumbling box. Uh, and they hated him. They wanted to kill him. He made him look bad. Not only that, he was a traitor. He was one of them, and they'd give him letters to go to Damascus to get those of the way Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem where they could be persecuted and prosecuted for their faith. And here he is now. He's joined their side. He's like a he was a traitor. He went over to the other side, so they're they're really upset with him. So let's go a little bit further in verse 24. But uh, their laying wait a wait was known of Saul, they and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So this walled city, in a walled city, and so they're at all the gates, all any place that comes out of that city, they're watching. They've convinced the authorities that that he's a troublemaker, that he's there to uh, create trouble. So they're watching. They're they're wanting to kill him. So he's got to get out of that walled city. So, uh, so verse 25. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down uh, by the wall in a basket. So <laughs> they just put him in a big basket and and let him down over the wall. And it's, you know when we stop and think about it, uh, Christ, God always gives us a way of escape. Uh, the enemy can't box us in. The enemy can't confine us. He can't restrain us unless God allows us. So I went over to uh, 2 Timothy and real quick at a verse over there in chapter 4 verse 18. He says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. He said, God will deliver me from every evil work. And that's for you and I. Uh, Paul is in a, in a physical situation. He's in a physical restraint where he can't get out of the city. But sometimes uh, the devil and the world, and uh, they, they confine us. As, they try to restrict us. We saw some of this through the pandemic. Where they shut some churches down. They said, you know, you couldn't worship. And, and they finally said, well, you can go in, but you can only do it this way and that way. So as they tried to confine and even they trying today to confine us in what we can preach. Uh, be sure that we're publicly, you know, that we have that PC, uh, we're politically correct, that we're doing and saying what's right and everything. And we see more and more of that happening, and it's going to happen more and more as uh, we go forward with Christianity and, and this world we're living in today. But here we see that uh, to help Paul uh, get away, they let him down by this basket. So let's go on down to verse 26 and see the progress here as he's moving about now. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he is said to join himself to the disciples. So he's up to Jerusalem. He's trying to join the believers. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that, that he was a disciple. Now remember, a disciple was just a follower of Christ. That's not that he's talk, talking about apostles. He's talking about the disciples. So what he's in, he's going to Jerusalem. And uh, you might say the local church, the local group of people that are believers. And... Uh, He's trying to join them. He's, he, he just wants to be in with fellowship with them and, and share the uh, what's going on in their lives, you know, and they just uh, be a part of the church. And uh, they're afraid of him. Uh, they don't know what to believe. Here he is. He's, he uh, he wants a fellowship, but they're scared of him. A said, a said means he, he kept trying. He kept going back to him and going back to him. He wanted to, to, uh, to join the group. But they said, you know what? I can't believe it. Here we, we know about you. 
We saw that with Ananias a little bit earlier last week there. Uh, we know who you are and we know what your purpose is and, and now you want to join us and you know, they get, they get, they're suspicious and you can understand why because uh, he was wanting to kill Christians. He was wanting to imprison them. And so maybe he's just playing along and trying to find out who they are. Uh, we read about that a lot of times over in places like China and that they'll, they'll put people out that, that appear to be a Christian and so they can find the names of those believers and turn it into the government. So he says here that uh, they didn't know what to do. They was afraid of him, but, but Barnabas, we read about Barnabas back earlier. If you remember, he sold some property and gave the money uh, in chapter 4 there to the church. And so we see Barnabas, and says Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. So the disciples are rejecting him. So here comes Barnabas, and, uh, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So apparently Barnabas sat down with Paul and said, Hey, Paul, tell me your story. Uh, tell me what's going on in your life. Tell me what's happened to you. And so uh, Saul or Paul uh, probably just sat down and related. Here's what happened. I was on the road from Jerusalem to Damascus. I was going down to persecute the believers. Here I saw this light on the way. Jesus spoke to me. I went in down into Damascus. Ananias came and laid hands on me and my eyes. I received my eyesight. And uh, I've been up in Arabia for three years now. And here I am back. And, and I'm trying to, trying to be part of the church now. And people just won't accept me. Uh, here I was, I was an enemy at the church, I understand that, but he says, you know, uh, Barnabas here, I'm, I want to be a part of it. So what did Barnabas do? He, he took him to the, the church authority, the leadership in the church. He took him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of the Lord. So this is what Barnabas said, here's what's happened and here's what, here's what he's been doing. He's been preaching boldly now. He's put his, kind of stuck his neck out. He's put his life on the line here to, to take a stand for Christ. So he's, he's supporting us now. So, And uh, verse 28, and he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. So we see the idea then uh, he's going in and out with them. Now he's he's uh, speaking to them. He's fellowshipping with them. Remember, he's gone up nice seeing Peter and uh, James, the half-brother of Jesus. And we see all these things happening. As he's being, being brought into the church. And he, he has a testimony. See, they've... they've he says, here's what happened to me on the road. Okay, so then they look at his life. What's happening in his life? Is he, is he reflecting this, this newfound faith? Is he reflecting this conversion, this repentance, turning from the world, turning from the legalistic Judaism, and turning over to the, the grace of God and receiving Christ as his Savior? So they see the evidence of his salvation. And that's why it's important for you and I. Uh, you know, there's when we get to come to know Christ as our Savior, it's important that we... Understand that, hey, we're a new creature. We need to show that to the world. And uh, I know after I got saved that people would talk, mention to me, you know, how, how they saw the difference between what I was before and after. And so we, for you and I, and sometimes it's not that obvious, but it's always important we see things that uh, we need to do as Christians, right? Uh, what do we see Paul doing? Yes, he, he got saved there and he's, you know, he got out, he went over to Arabia and he, he learned more about God and that's what we need to do. He learned more about Jesus, learned more about what the Bible says as far as what a Christian, uh, what it's all about to be a Christian. And for you and I as Christians, when we come to know Christ as our Savior, that's what we need to do. We need to, to get in and learn more about it. We have the Bible and we know that when we get saved, we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And so now we need to have that hunger for the Word. We get the milk of the Word and we need to grow. You know, when you got saved, and I've shared that when I first got saved, I, I was just about as, you know, as dumb as a rock as far as all the things in the Bible. I knew the books of the Bible and like the Ten Commandments, those things like that. But until I got saved, they weren't really a part of my life. Once I come to know Christ, I had a lot to learn, a lot to grow about. And so, and that's what Paul is doing. He's going out and he's learning more and more. And he's fellowshipping, fellowshipping with other believers. We talked about that earlier, that one of the signs of a Christian when you come to know Christ as your Savior, one of the signs that you're saved is that you're, you have now have brothers in Christ and you have a desire to be with them and have a desire to fellowship with them. And that's what uh, Paul did, or Saul did. He went to Jerusalem. He wanted to be part of the disciples up there in Jerusalem. And if you remember Jerusalem, that's where he was doing all the, really raising all this havoc with the church. And, and they knew about them. They heard about him up there. It was happening, well, Stephen and others right there. And so uh, they were fearful. But Paul, he's wanting to be a part of it. 
And that's another one of those indications, again, that when we come to know Christ, we're going to have a hunger for the Word of God and say, I don't know if I'm saved or not. Well, uh, do you have a hunger for the Word of God? Do you want to study and learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, do you want to fellowship with other believers? Do you have a desire to fellowship with other believers? Uh, those are two of the indications of several others that we can look at. Do you love the brother? Okay, so that's another indication. If you're saved, you're going to love the brothers. You're going to want to be with them, and you love them. So, you see, Paul, happened to, he's... Uh, but he's displaying those kind of uh, symptoms or you know, those kind of uh, attributes as it comes from knowing Christ as our Savior. So he went up to see Peter, and uh, as, as he got up there to see Peter, he's going around then after that, and uh, he's going around and he's getting involved in, in the church and, and going out and preaching and so forth there. Verse 29 to 30, he's faithful in preaching boldly. So let's go down to verse 29. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, here we go. Here's the, here he is. You see, uh, in verse 23, uh, the Jews, the religious leaders, were ready to, to kill him. And now the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. He disputed against the Grecians. Uh, if we go back, remember the story with uh, Stephen, and he went around to the different synagogues, and, and he went to his preaching, and uh, he, they, he upset them. The Grecians, the Grecians were those uh, Jews that were scattered by the Romans. And uh, they'd been through all parts of the known world at that time. And they, they would come back to Jerusalem for the feast days, for different, uh, the tabernacles and the Passover and those kind of things. Uh, but, but they were, uh, they followed more than the, the Greek culture. Uh, they spoke uh, the Greek. Uh, they, their Bible was the Septuagint. If you remember, that was a, uh, they, some uh, scholars took the Old Testament and in 70 days, 70 scholars translated the Old Testament from the Hebrew to the Greek. Well, the, the uh, Jews... Uh, the, from the Jerusalem that stayed there, they were Hebrews. They followed the Hebrew Bible, and that was their Bible. So we see the Grecians, now they have this other. And not only that, the Grecians rejected Christ. Uh, they had followed, you know, they would come for the feast days, and they would follow the law and do all those things. And now here comes this other Jews, the Peter and Paul and, and all these different apostles and disciples, and they're preaching and teaching Christ, and Christ is not in their picture. Uh, the Messiah hasn't come yet. This Christ couldn't be the Messiah because he hasn't. He didn't do what the Messiah should do. He had been killed, crucified, and so they dispute. So in their anger, because he wasn't in tune with them, uh, they wanted to kill him. And so he sat there and, and uh, disputed with them. And now they're ready to kill him. Which, when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. So what happened was they were so angry they wanted to get rid of him. So what happened was they send Paul and get him out of there and they send him down to St. Force that Tarsus he ends up. And if you remember, he saw love Tarsus, wasn't it? That's his hometown. So he went back to his hometown and I'll be a part of that a group there now. And I'm going to go up to 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, verse 13. And he says here, uh, We have the, the same spirit of faith according as is written, I believed. And therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore we speak. And the reason I bring that up is because that's what he preached. That's what Paul was preaching. That's why the Grecians, or the religious leaders, got so upset with him. He said, we're, we're, I'm preaching what we believe. And what we believe is the truth. And again, it gets back to what he told the Galatians, churches of Galatia. He said, there's only one truth. And that's true. Listen, we live in a culture today that wants to denounce that, wants to deny that. But when, and no matter what you talk about, there can only be one truth. There can be different variances of that truth, but there's only one truth. And the one truth is that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Uh, the Judaizers, those uh, Jews that would come along after Paul, they would try to uh, get them to be, well, you've got to be baptized, you've got to obey the law, you've got to uh, do the, the feast. And Paul says, no, no, it's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus alone. And that's what Paul is going to be preaching and teaching as he goes through with his epistles. We're going to read more about it. So he had he's preaching the gospel. That was his nature. That's who he was. Get down to verse 31 then. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee, Galilee excuse me, and Samaria and were edified walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So we see the church just like it should be. It's at peace. <laughs> the main persecutors out of the picture now. Uh, they're, they're back. Uh, Paul, who was trying to get rid of all the church, uh, he's on their side now, so they have peace. The church is lifted up. The church is being edified, lifted up by what's going on in it. Uh, they're walking in a, a fear of the Lord. That's not a, not a terror. That's a, a reverence. Excuse me. That's a reverence of God. Uh, they're standing in awe of God. They're reverencing God. They're, they're having the right 
if I'm going to say they're, they're having the right understanding of uh, their position with God. You know, when we look at who God is and we understand who we are, uh, uh, the psalmist says over in, in Psalm 8, you know, how excellent is thy name, O Lord, and all the earth, what is man that you're even mindful of us? We are so insignificant, but God is so good and so gracious to us. And so also they're also in the Spirit's comfort. And so we have that the comfort of knowing who we are. We're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. He gives us encouragement. He gives us comfort. He gives us peace. When we're walking at the path that pleases God, when we're a blessing to Him, and He can work in our lives, and we can see the church then. When we're doing our part, when we're living like we should, and we're the example we should, when we're the light in the world that we ought to be, then the church is going to grow. But the church has to see, the people outside of the church has to see the church living what the Bible says. We live our faith. And if we don't live our faith, then we, we're accountable when people stumble and stay away from Jesus. So if you're watching this today, if you're not a believer, I just encourage you to repent, to turn from the world. That's what repentance is, to turn, turn from the world, turn to God and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He shed his blood at Calvary to pay for your sins. That we might be redeemed out of the slave market of sin and be reunited with Christ and reunited with the Father through that shed blood. So make that move. Don't put it off. And for Christians, understand what Paul did. He went, he got saved, he learned, he studied, he found out more about who Jesus Christ was, and then he took that to the disciples and he wanted a fellowship. He wanted to be a part of the church. So that's what our move is. That's what we need to do. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time, and we pray you be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life as Christians, that we would be a witness, a testimony, that we'd have a hunger for your word, and that we would grow in our knowledge of you each day as we study the Bible, Lord. And for those that don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day, that this would be the time, that they come, come and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in Him and Him alone for their salvation. And we thank you for what you've done and for what you're going to do, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.